here in the new 2022 Toyota Sequoia, courtesy of Younger Toyota in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I am in this one today, not just because of the incredible reliability, but there is a ton of space in this three row SUV. You guys will see what I'm talking about when we get to that third row legroom. I'm gonna test it out for you. But really the question for me in this video is going to be, do you buy this 2022 Sequoia now, or do you wait for the 2023 redesign, which is when it's rumored to happen as a 2023 model? So nonetheless, in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one, from acceleration to braking, steering for ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all of that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with the pricing and so there are going to be several different trim levels available for the 2022 sequoia first one being the sr5 starting at fifty thousand five hundred dollars then there is the trd sport which actually is the one we have today starting at fifty three thousand two hundred and fifteen dollars limited for fifty nine thousand five twenty nightshade special edition for sixty thousand six hundred and five platinum for sixty six thousand five fifty and lastly the trd pro starting at sixty four thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars but all of that pricing was for the rear wheel drive configuration with the exception of that trd pro that comes standard with four wheel drive but if you wanted to add four wheel drive to any of those other trims you can simply add roughly thirty two hundred dollars then to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the sequoia is going to be the same powering this beast is a 5.7 liter naturally aspirated v8 putting out 381 horsepower at 5600 rpm 401 pound feet of torque coming in at 3600 rpm power center rear wheel or all wheels through a six-speed automatic. Zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 6.6 .6 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 13 in the city, 17 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. But so now having gotten all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put this thing to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2022 Toyota Sequoia here up to speed. All right, here she is, you guys. Actually, not bad. It's a V8, that's right. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, that is plenty of an acceleration. You're definitely not gonna have any issues merging onto the highway. I was somewhat hesitant about what that was going to feel like just because of the sheer size of the Sequoia. It's a mammoth, but with a V8, it's definitely gonna be enough power. So that is plenty of an acceleration for this thing. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 13.9 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13.6 inch rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, it is going to come in at approximately 130 feet. And I will say, kind of feels like that. That is a little bit on the higher side as far as that number goes. And it is a bit of a softer braking feel. Again, probably because this thing is a beast. Acceleration was great. Wouldn't have minded if the brakes bit just a bit harder on the Sequoia though. That's just my personal opinion. Then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna find an independent double wishbone type front suspension. In the back, exact same thing. Independent double wishbone type rear suspension. Gas pressurized shock absorbers, front and rear stabilizer bars. But the suspension configurations, there's gonna be a few of them that are gonna differ amongst the trim levels. For example, if you go with the TRD Sport that we have today, that is actually going to add a TRD tuned build shock absorbers along with the performance tune anti-sway bar as well platinum trim is actually going to add an adaptive suspension system meaning it's going to monitor each shock absorber individually not only giving a smoother ride but also tightening up the suspension during heavy cornering as well giving a better handling so again best of both worlds there also an air suspension for the platinum trim level so really if you're looking for the utmost ride quality and a little better driving dynamics that platinum trim level is really where it's going to be at for that particular configuration then if you were to go with the trd pro that is going to add to this trd sports off-roadness adding things like trd fox shocks and upgraded springs then as well and as far as ride quality goes it's actually been perfectly fine i'm on some very smooth roads here in hagerstown i'll say that but the ride quality has been perfectly fine in my short test drive here today definitely no issues there as far as steering feel goes as we are turning into uh green briar state park here steering feel is yeah, just a little bit on the looser side, but it's kind of expected for a super huge SUV like this. So wouldn't have minded if it was firmed up a little bit. That's just my personal preference. But for what this SUV is, it's probably perfectly fine. So no issues there. As far as cabin noise goes, I am driving right now. There isn't a whole lot of wind noise or exterior road noise whatsoever coming into the cabin. So that is certainly on point. And touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back with the exception of those third row headrests being a little bit larger than normal. But 
other than that, I can see perfectly fine out the back. And you could fold that third row down anyways, and that would assist with visibility as well. And not only that, there actually is a button by the driver's side right knee here that opens and closes that rear power window. So you don't always see that on other SUVs. I know you see it in the Forerunner that I just got done reviewing, but with other SUVs out there that are not Toyota, you don't usually get that. And I personally love that. So anyways, that about rounds up the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Toyota Sequoia. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Toyota Sequoia looking dang good in black here let's go ahead and start up front on this beast 10 inches of ground clearance let me just start with that and that's a big deal because most other suvs will give you around seven or eight inches so if you were planning on taking this thing a little bit off road 10 inches is definitely a very good starting point at least but also just below it if you were to go with the trd pro i know we don't have it today but you will actually get a trd front skid plate if you were going off-roading again that's going to help definitely protect a lot of the undercarriage components so therefore that's what that trd pro trim is going to be there for but front grille is going to of course differ amongst the trim levels for example since we have this trd sport we have our front grille completely blacked out there's going to be some chrome horizontal bars and then there's a black front grille with the toyota lettering spelled out horizontally if you were to go with that trd pro trim so again a little bit different depending on the trim level led headlights coming standard for all trim levels across the board i absolutely love love that so didn't always happen that way so i do like to emphasize that now automatic feature coming standard across the board as well meaning when it starts to get dark out at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there led fog lights coming standard for every single trim level as well i love that not only that if you were to go with the trd pro you actually get rigid led fog lights meaning the company that makes it is called rigid but little different design really but either way you get led fog lights across the board so i love that but pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the sequoia all right so now since we are around to the side of this one low profile roof rails coming for all trim levels and they're going to be finished in either black or chrome depending upon the trim level that you go with so we have all the black accents in case you guys didn't notice that already for the trd sport so that's what you're looking at right now rear privacy glass does come standard for every single trim level across the board but also raised black roof rails for the trd pro i almost forgot to mention that and it comes with horse horizontal bars as well. I can't show it to you guys because we don't actually have it today, but that is going to be there for you as well. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable heated side mirrors for all trim levels across the board with LED integrated turd signals for the limited trim level and up. And they will also be auto dimming and power folding yet again with that limited trim level and up. So that's pretty nice. Running boards are going to come standard on all trim levels, as you can imagine with 10 inches of ground clearance. This one does sit up a little bit higher than normal so running boards are a necessity cast aluminum running boards then for the trd pro that's pretty cool let's take a look down at the wheel setup 18 inch alloys for the sr5 20 inch alloys for the trd sport limited and platinum and then 18 inch bbs forged aluminum alloys for the trd pro but pretty much rounds out the side of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper when it comes to the badging in the back there it's either going to be finished in chrome or black again we have all the black accents on this one smoke taillight housings coming standard for every single trim level i do like that look looking down below though when it comes to the towing capacity we do have both four and seven pin connectors and the towing capacity is actually going to come in at 7100 pounds if you were planning on towing with the sequoia so i always like to mention that but to the bottom right hand corner there you do have a single exhaust outlet so i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So now since we are around to the back of the Sequoia, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is going to be a power tailgate. If you were to go with the limited trim level and up, otherwise it is simply a manual tailgate. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 18.9 cubic feet behind that third row. If that was not enough space, of course, the third row does fold down, bumping that up to 66 cubic feet. And then with all rows folded behind that first row, that is going to come in at a very impressive 120.1 cubic feet. That is a ton 
ton of space, by the way. So plenty of space there. And there is a power folding third road that is available. So I wanted to mention that on the higher trim levels, we of course don't have it here today. Can find some grocery bag hooks in that cargo area. There's a 12 volt power outlet. There are tie down anchors. And lastly, my favorite part, in floor storage if you lift up underneath of that cargo floor so you can store your ice scraper or whatever else you need it's actually a decent amount of storage there but then make your way up to the third row leg room this is very impressive you guys 35.3 inches of third row leg room that is crazy that's very very impressive usually with three row suvs it comes in at 29 inches or 30 inches at tops but 35.3 that is where all the space is right here. So it is adult friendly in the third row, believe it or not. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in that third row. You do have cup holders for those third row passengers. They even have storage back there just beneath the cup holders. And there is rear ventilation for all three rows. And that's gonna be found kind of on the ceiling of the Sequoia, even in that third row. So you gotta love that. Make our way to the second row leg room. That's gonna come in at 40.9 inches. Again, for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. Still plenty of space there. When it comes to the second row configurations because you can get captain's chairs or bench seating captain's chairs is going to come with the trd sport like we have today or the platinum or the trd pro bench seating then coming with the sr5 and limited there is an optional nine inch blu-ray player with headphones don't have it today but there's also some climate control buttons found just in front of those second row passengers so they can set their own temperatures if they wanted to just beneath that if they pull out underneath there they're actually going to find a couple cup holders which is pretty darn nice that's where they're going to be located at least for the captain captain's chairs configuration and there is a 12 volt power outlet then for those second row passengers as well but then make your way up to the front seats eight-way power driver's seat with cloth finishes coming with the sr5 and trd sport that of course again is what we have today 10-way power driver's seat coming with the limited and that's going to come with a leather finish as well and those front seats will be heated platinum trim then is going to add a perforated leather meaning you get ventilated front seats then as well with the platinum but Overall, I gotta be honest, it's been quite a while, I feel like, since I've sat in cloth seats that were this comfortable. Let me just say that. I've sat in cloth seats because I review plenty of cars, but these are very, very comfortable cloth seats. So if you're gonna go that route, well, at least they're comfortable, right? So I'm definitely a fan. But anyways, to make our way to the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. So definitely easily able to find my perfect driving position and it is leather wrapped then as well. Then make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. It is a pretty basic key, which is good news for me because I like to lose my keys in Ocean City, Maryland. And when I do that, it's gonna be less expensive to replace this thing. But anyways, you got the Toyota logo on the one side, lock, unlock. It is all keyless entry with the push button start for all trim levels so all i'm going to do here simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee and so once started up tachometer is on your left speedometer is on your right there is a small digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display you can use the steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel giving you things like your outside temperature tire pressure information there is a digital speedometer if you chose to display that up there how many miles you have left until you hit empty the list goes on pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion at least of those gauges then making our way to overall interior quality power moonroof coming with all trim levels across the board you will get home link controls if you were to go with a limited trim level and up don't have them here today though overhead sunglass holder coming with all trim levels as well it's found on the ceiling there tri-zoom climate control for all trim levels like i was mentioning to you guys one of the best parts about the sequoia besides that power rear window though is the dual glove boxes a lot of times that kind of thing is going to be overlooked by others but i love that there's two glove boxes because you usually don't get that with other suvs so it's different you guys know i like different so we got upper glove box and a lower glove box and since i mentioned the towing capacity earlier there is a tow or haul mode found just in front of the uh shifter here just in front of the cup holders there are actually three usb charging ports another 12 volt power outlet there's a smaller cup holder kind of just behind the dual cup holders a little bit of orange ambient lighting as well there's a little bit of space just behind the shifter i think that's probably to put the key in and then within the center armrest there is probably the most space of any vehicle out there right now there's a ton of storage there's a 12 volt power outlet there on the back side of the center armrest you're actually going to find a little slot for business cards you're also going to find a place where you can put your pen it's not going to slide around and there is a separate section for tissues as well dare you put anything else besides tissues in that section and toyota will find you so wanted to make you guys aware of that but overall interior quality is 
eh, it's kind of on the basic side if I'm being honest. Maybe the redesign next year is going to fix that, but it'll get the job done. I'll just put it that way. But so then taking a look at the infotainment screen here, it is a seven inch color touchscreen display coming standard for all trim levels. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, so that's a good thing. Factory navigation system coming with a limited trim level and up. Of course, you can check out your radio information up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems, you will find eight speakers with the SR5 and TRD Sport that we have today, 12 speakers with the limited, and then there is a 14 speaker JBL sound system with the Platinum and TRD Pro. And by the way, that sound system comes with an external amp and subwoofer as well. So that's pretty cool. But like I said, we do have the eight speaker sound system here today. So what do you guys say? Since we're in December, let's go ahead and turn on some Christmas music and let's test out the clarity of this one. Relatives you don't know, then comes that... Actually not that bad. There was a very decent amount of bass for a uh, basic eight speaker sound system and you know what it's not that bad you, a lot of times you'll find six speaker sound systems in SUV so the eight speakers extra two speakers it's kind of nice for it being a standard sound system in the Sequoia it's not that bad I'll say that last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least though is when you do put this one in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board which is always is going to lead us into safety and so at the time of this video although it's not tested by IHS it has scored some good safety ratings out there you guys can do your own research there but front side side curtain airbags do come standard but driver and passenger knee airbags then as well in the back you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard for all trim levels across the board blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert front and rear park assist and Toyota Safety Sense, which includes a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert, automatic high beams, and dynamic radar cruise control then as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of our 2022 Sequoia, I love that there is an adult-friendly third row, meaning I can actually fit back there. It's very rare that I fit in a third row SUV because, I don't know, I'm six feet tall and usually there isn't all that much space back there. It's usually left for kids. so. If you have adults that want to sit in the third row, they can do that here in the Sequoia. Of course, you have that amazingly reliable V8 found in the Sequoia as well. You could check out any Consumer Reports magazine for confirmation of that. As far as room for improvement goes, it's just so, so interior quality. It's kind of on the basic side, especially for the price range. So hopefully that changes next time around. Outdated tech as well. It's a seven inch color touchscreen display in a vehicle that's going for over $50,000. That needs to be changed and I'm sure it will in the next generation. So. That leads me to the ultimate question. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you buy the 2022 Sequoia now or do you wait for the 2023 model year redesign? So that is